Nirat C. Chowdhury was born in a Bengali family in Kishorganj district in Bangladesh. Chowdhury has written both in Bengali and English, and he is considered to be one of the most well-known writers of non-fiction in India. Though he later settled in England, most of his works deal with the history and culture of colonial India. His most popular pieces include Autobiography of an Unknown Indian, The Continent of Sars, and The Passage to England. Though he was an Indian by birth, his works portray him as an Anglophile. An Anglophile is a person who greatly admires England. So, he was considered to be an Anglophile, who is extremely critical of almost every aspect of Indian culture and provides a caustic satire of India. The simple, racy and lucid style of writing makes Chowdhury's works enjoyable and engaging. Though his ideas may seem unsavory to a few, his argumentative and rationalistic approach to writing offers much food for thought. Money and the Englishman talks about the attitude kept by the Indians and Englishmen when it comes to money. Okay, the author brings to us the difference in the culture and the lives of people in the two countries. As we already know, Chaudhary is an Anglophile. He has great love for the people of England and also adopts their lifestyle. So by drawing a comparison between the Indians and the Englishmen, and using the subject of money as an example, he portrays Englishmen's prudery and satirizes Indians. Nirat Chaudhary says that he always looked up to the English people and the English society since childhood. He always loved the English culture. He adopts them in the way he dresses and acts. He was also very curious to know about the economic condition and problems, but he gave no attention to them, knowing that he will not be able to understand them. He says he is not so interested in economics, but it cannot be avoided in today's world. He says that in Great Britain and Western Europe, it is very hard to know the exact degree of attachment people have for money. You cannot make out people's feelings for money. He also tells of how an Englishman will confess to even the most morally corrupt passion. But when it comes to money, some investigation has to be done. They will not tell you how they feel about money or how they treat money. Chowdhury says he never asked an Englishman how much love for money he has in his heart. Okay, but instead, he looked for clues and symptoms. He tries to find it out secretly on his own. He says in the Indian homes, it is very easy to find out the relationship they have with money. Now, why is this so? Why is it so difficult in the English culture and so easy in the Indian culture? Why? The reason is because every Indian household will keep a special corner in the house for Goddess Lakshmi, who gives prosperity. So Chowdhury says, if you enter the house of an Indian, you will always find a special corner in the house for Goddess Lakshmi who gives prosperity. So he says that the Indians connect or link religion very tightly to money. But he says he does not find such religious symptoms in the English household. So this is number one difference between the Indians and the English household. Even in the Indian shops, the image of God in the form of an elephant-headed God of success, Ganesha, can be found in every business center. If you enter some shops, you will find the image of Ganesha in the corner. Okay, so even the dishonest and corrupt person keeps God in their homes and shops, so they will become prosperous. But on the other hand, Chaudhary says that Christianity does not seem to have been directly involved in financial transactions like Hinduism. So this is another difference between the Indians and the English when it comes to money.